Hello and welcome back to the Rust beginner tutorial on coding in crypto. So today we're going to be talking about some basic operations in Rust, mainly functions, conditionals, and loops. So you've already seen me work with functions quite a bit, and we've even touched on conditionals before. Um, but we're just going to put it all in one place here, fleshed out a little bit so you have it for reference. So the first thing we're going to cover is function returns. Now, this could be done in a couple of ways in Rust. So let's just do like function give me slice. And we're going to tell it that the return type is going to be the static string slice value. And you can remember that from the last video that we did on uh, borrowing and references and things like that. So we're just going to return pizza. So one thing that's super important to note is no matter how you do your return, whether with the keyword or any of the other methods that we're going to go over, you want to omit that semicolon. So super important detail right there. But so this is one way to do it. Whenever you have a return value, you have to declare the data type that this function is going to expect. So here it's going to expect a, a string slice. And we're going to write another one that says, give me string. And that one's going to, of course, expect a string. But now let's do this a little differently. Let's just do, we could do return string from pizza, or we could just simply omit this return statement. Since we don't have the semicolon here, we can just write this line like this and that's our return. So it's kind of like a shorthand. And then you can even go so far as to do something like this which is more of the same of what we just did, but in a very like stripped down sense, this is totally acceptable too. So you don't even have to declare any kind of variable or anything. You could see we're just returning the number four. So depending on your use case, that might be pretty convenient. So a lot of flexibility with returning values in functions. Now let's move on to conditionals here. So you guys definitely saw me do this already. Um, but here's an official representation of conditionals in Rust. So if we just say let number equal three, we could say if number is less than five, print true. Now we're also gonna say else if number equals five, print, I don't know, like okay. And lastly, else, meaning if it's less than, we're gonna print false. And these are just arbitrary values. But that right there is a conditional. So like I said, you've seen it before, but um, you know they do make it pretty easy. It's very similar to, it looks similar to like a combination of like Java and Python, if I'm being honest, but not super verbose. Um, loops are even cooler, actually. There's a lot of nice built-in functionality for loops in Rust. So let's take a look at, we'll start with a while loop. So a while loop is actually pretty simple to implement. It's one of the more simple ways to do a loop. You can just do the word loop. And then let's just do like print line again. And this is gonna be an infinite loop. So just a little warning to the user here that this is an infinite loop. But yeah, this is a while loop right here. So obviously, if you want to add logic to break out of this and stuff, or you know, you want to have a counter or something, that's what you would probably do. But this will run forever unless you break out of it. Um, how about a for loop? Well, a for loop is done a little bit differently. So you don't use the loop keyword for a for loop. You still use for, like you've probably seen in other languages. And let's just say for n in range 1 through 40. So that's a pretty neat thing right there. Rust lets you define a range just like that in line without having to call in any kind of like function or embedded method or anything that will generate a range for you. It's part of the structure of the language. So that part I think is super neat. And then we're just going to do like, let's just do like hello number whatever. And we'll obviously just plug N into that. So cool. Um, and the last type of loop that we're going to cover is we're going to cover a loop that can actually be stored as a variable. So this is kind of cool. 
um, you can set a variable equal to a loop and then whatever you break out of the loop with and return a value, that's what's going to be set to that particular value. So that might be a mouthful, but let's just take a look at what that looks like in practice. <clears throat> so we set our counter equal to zero to start. And now we're going to let G equal the loop. And inside the loop, we're going to just say, if the counter equals three, we're going to break out of it. Now, instead of going like this and just hitting a semicolon for break, I'm actually going to go ahead and put these curly brackets here. And we're going to return that donut slice. And then we can't forget to add our semicolons in. But this is going to, obviously, when this counter hits up to three, it's going to add this donut value as the value of G. So super cool. And this is, you can probably already think of the use cases where this is convenient, but don't do something like I just did. Make sure that you add some kind of incrementing function here. And then you'll actually have this counter going up. So you're good to go. So this was a really good once over of some basic operations in Rust. In the next video, we're going to see collections and iterating. So we're going to look at things like vectors, which are similar to lists. And we're going to look at arrays. And we're going to see how Rust offers different ways to iterate over these kind of like collection objects. So that'll be super helpful. And, you know, some of this stuff might even tie in. So stay tuned. Thanks.